Hi, welcome to today's lesson. Uh, what we're going to be looking at today is upper and lower bounds. Upper and lower bounds. Alright, so upper and lower bounds. Right, now what are upper and lower bounds? Basically, when you are measuring something, let's say I'm measuring a piece of string. Okay? Um, I've got this lovely piece of string here, and there it is. It's a straight piece of string, so I pulled it straight. And I want to measure something. Now, when I'm measuring something, I'll look at this and I'll say, oh, look, it's 31 centimeters, point, uh, it's halfway between 0.3 and 0.2. You with me? Well, it's halfway between 0.3 and 0.2. So, well, which one is closer to? Well, it's, it's closer to 0.3, so let's make it 31.3 centimeters. But it's not 31.3 centimeters, okay? I just said it's kind of closer to 31.3 because I, I can only measure up to a certain number, a certain accuracy on my ruler because I only have millimeters here. So I say, okay, well, that's close enough for measuring a piece of string. No worries, okay? But what happens if I actually wanted to zoom into this? What happens if I actually took this, all right? There's my magnifying glass. Pretty cool, huh? And I zoomed in and I said, okay, great. Well, if I zoom in, all right, if I zoom in really close, and that's... 31.2 and there is um, over there is 31.3 and I zoom in and I say okay well it's definitely past halfway right but what's my exact measurement now the problem comes in is like will that help me with my string if I've got a piece of string and I want to know whether it's 31.2 or 31.3 no not really okay so I say okay great I don't mind if there's a slight error I don't mind if I'm if I'm out by half a millimeter Okay, half a millimeter is teeny tiny, very small. Okay, in this case, so that's not a problem. So let's 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 just leave it at thirty-one point three. Okay, or actually, well, let's just leave it at thirty-one, right? Because that's about the that's the closest centimeter that I can get to. I said, okay, great. Let's leave it at thirty-one. But now, hang on a second. Let's leave it at thirty-one. But let's think about what is the error that I've incurred by this. Okay, all right. So what is the what is the biggest mistake that I could have measured, all right? And what is the smallest mistake I could have had? Well, okay, great. So this is where bounds come in because I have to take into consideration the biggest error and the smallest error, even though I know that I haven't measured this accurately. Okay, so what I'd like to look at is, uh, is the example that I've got there. They said that instead of this 31 centimeters, which I've done, all right, they said a length of string, so e.g., they said a length of string is measured to 3.7. So there's a length of string slightly up. I pull it straight, eh, like that, okay? And I measure it, and I measure this to 3.7 centimeters. Okay, so that's pretty accurate, pretty accurate. Right. But as you saw there, it might be slightly closer to the 0.7 than the 0.6. Are you with me? All right, but it's definitely between 3.7 and 3.6, okay? Or it might be slightly past the 0.7 between the 0.7 and the 0.8. So I said, well, let's just take it to 0.7 because it's closer to the 0.7, okay? So I've got to say, okay, well, what's the biggest error that could do? What's the lowest number, the lower bound, that could possibly round to 3.7? Okay, and this one, this one most people think about. What can round to 3.7 or round up? Well, I always go, I will look at one decimal place past where I'm rounding, Okay, and if it's five or more, it rounds up, or four or less, it goes down, right? So I said, okay, well, what can possibly round up to 3.7? 3.65. If I had to round that to one decimal place, this five will push the six up. Fantastic. That's not a problem. Now, what is, does become slightly confusing is the upper bound. I'll say, okay, well, what's the biggest number that could possibly round down to this? 3.7. Well, 7.4 would round down to that. Super. 7.49 would round down to that as well. You with me? Okay. Well, I can get a bigger number than that. Well, I can do 7499. That would still round down to 3.7 because the 4 is all I care about. Well, let's get a bigger number, Mr. Rouge. How about that? 3.74999. Super. 999999. I can go on to infinity. Okay, I could just carry on adding 9s. And each time I add a 9, I make it that teeny tiny little bit bigger. All right. So you could never tell me, well, what's the biggest number that could possibly round down if I'm doing 3.74? Are you with me? So what I do is I say, okay, great. I could always add on nines. But if I start adding on nines to infinity, okay, what actually is this? It becomes 3.75. So let's make a mistake. 
Let's make a mistake, but no, we're making a mistake. So let's say the upper bound is 3.75. And everyone in the class usually at this point goes, no way, no way. Hang on a second, sir. 3.75 does not down, round down to 3.7. It rounds up to 3.8. Yeah, you're right. You're right, it does. But this is the biggest number that I can possibly get that could round down to 3.7. But I've made a mistake, right? Because I've just added on nines all the time, right? Which eventually becomes 3.75. Uh, if you deal with the limits of, of series, you actually prove how 0 0.99999 equals 1. All right, which is very interesting, but that's like years down the line if you're watching this. Okay, so this is what you get to, all right? So you say, okay, great. So this is the biggest number that can possibly round down to 3.7. But I know it's a mistake. So all that I do, this is my ceiling, all I do is I make it excluded. Okay, if you've watched the... Um, Inequalities, you know about included and excluded inequalities, so I just exclude it. So, in order to write this as my bounds, what can this round to? Let's call this the length, right? Length. So, my lower bound will be 3.65. It can equal 3.65, so it's less than or equal to the length, right? right. But it's less than... 3.75. So it can't equal 3.75. I know it's excluded, but it's still a ceiling that I need to use because that there would incorporate as many nines as I could possibly write. Okay. If I wanted to make this video three hours long, I'd just carry on writing nines until I ran out of ink. Okay. <laughs> That's it. So the lower bound is included, less than or equal to, because it, it is part of the measurement. 3.65 would round to 3.7. But the upper bound is excluded because it's not part of the measurement. I know that it's not part of the measurement, okay? But I know that it's everything up to 3.75, which would be 3.74999999 to infinity. You with me? Okay. It's a, it's a specific exclusion, all right? So the thing that I tell my kids is the easy way to remember it. I say, all I remember is that whatever you're rounding to, it's a half below Included and a half above, right? Excluded. That's it. A half of what you want to round to below, and a half of what you want to round to above. Now, I don't mean exactly a half, not 0 0.5, but I mean like a half of whatever you're rounding to. So, if I said, if you had, let's say, very quickly, this is not on the notes. So, if I said you had uh, 220 rounded to the closest 10, well, what's the upper bound? The upper bound of this would be, well, what are the bounds of this, sorry? Round to the closest 10, so that means the 10, so half below the 10 is 215, is the, upper, is the lower bound, is less than or equal to 220, which is less than, and the upper bound would be half above 225. So, whatever you're rounding to. So, if I'm rounding to the 10s, it's half below, half above. If I'm rounding to the 100s, it'd be half below, half above. Um, if I was rounding this, if I was rounding, let's say, 300 to the nearest 100, well, the lower bound will be three, uh, 250, it's less than or equal to, that's half below. 300, which is less than and half above 350. Okay, that's it. Very straightforward, easy way to remember it. Um, people get freaked out by the fact that this is not actually accurate, it's not, not actually correct. And I get, I, I usually end up with, we spend minutes, minutes and minutes of lesson time arguing about why it's not correct, which is great. And that's what you should be interacting with the teacher about. You should be talking about why is this not accurate? I don't like the fact that it's not accurate. Why is it not accurate? Why do you have to make this measure error? Okay. Um, in the next video, we're going to be looking at compound bounds about using lower and upper and all this and how to combine them. This is just very straightforward. Piece of cake. What's the lower bound? What's the upper bound? Half below, half above. Done. Okay. Remember, I'm here for you.